about this. So on this problem, um, what you guys notice is we have a perpendicular line, right? This line, MP, you don't have to write this down, but MP is perpendicular to the line LM. So we have a line, AJ, that is perpendicular to another line. This is very important because this is the definition that we've already gone over that I want to make sure that you guys remember. So we have a perpendicular line. Now, also about that line, what does that perpendicular line do to the line LM? Yes, Zach? It's the midpoint. It bisects it, right? So you could also say MP bisects LM. OK? So not only is it perpendicular to LM, it also bisects LM. Now, there's, two, there's a couple different definitions that, um, that we worked on if we had a perpendicular bisector. All right, so in your notes, we've talked about perpendicular bisectors. And what really was important is when we had a line P on our perpendicular bisector, does anybody remember what happens when you have a point that is on a perpendicular bisector? There was something that we wrote down. We haven't gone over it, though, in a while. Does anybody remember? Perpendicular bisector, a point that lies on your perpendicular bisector, something with equa. Lateral? No. Equa di, di, distance. Not quadrilateral. <laughs> it's equidistance to your endpoints of your other line. So what they're saying is, if I have a point P, this is um, your perpendicular bisector um, theorem of converse. If you have a point that is on your line, on your perpendicular bisector, it's perpendicular and it bisects it, then that point is equidistant to your perpendicular bisector's line's endpoints, meaning that side is equal to that side. Yes? OK, so now if I want to solve for x, well, now that we know that they're equal in measure, we can say that. All right, and now we just got to solve for x. Well, that's not that bad. And there you go. OK. Now, there's something we talked about last class. <coughs> 